Welcome to their Collection DX Review. I'm Andrew taking a look at Transformers MP28 Masterpiece Hot Rodimus, or as we know him, the same name without the Emus part at the end. So, uh, Hot Rod has been redone uh, basically to better match with the, uh, the new Masterpiece figures. He's basically an Autobot car sized, Masterpiece Autobot car sized, so which means he's, uh, he's about six inches long in car mode which puts him around the the right place to uh, hang out with the likes of Sideswipe, Prowl, or uh, any of the other Masterpiece cars. Uh, Design-wise, he was given a, a slick update by uh, one of Takara Tomi's artists, uh, Yuya Onishi. And if you have a chance, he did some gorgeous artwork for it, uh, where he made uh, Hot Rod basically look like an actual 80s concept car, and uh, you can really see that in the final product here. Uh, he is mostly painted in kind of a nice, uh, more magenta color, uh, like his appearance in the movie. Although there are some bits that are not painted, uh, like this elbow joint here, uh, the little other joints here, like the little buttons on top for mounting his photon lasers. I'm not sure if this is the dreaded unpaintable plastic. It is a little distracting, but I can live with it. Uh, he's got, you know, standard uh, four plastic tires. He rolls pretty well. Well, he rolls pretty well when your thing isn't bowed in the middle. But um, just understand that the only thing that seems to be dragging, at least on mine, is uh, his little orange like collar area here. Just make sure that gets uh, pushed up all the way as you're making him roll along. As far as what you can do with him, other than admire him in uh, car mode, you can take both of his photon lasers and uh, all you do is flip up the handle to expose this more squared peg that does not have tabs on it and you can just pop these in the back here fulfilling every Masterpiece car's need to have some kind of silly attack mode. Of course the original uh, G1 Hot Rod actually did have an attack mode and the way they replicate it here is you lift up his uh, the chrome part of his engine which actually was redesigned a bit um, for this version. It's not accurate to the the cartoon or the G1 toy, but still looks pretty cool. Just lift that up uh, pretty much as far as it'll go back and just stick one of the guns in the front here. And uh, if he ever gets a Target Master upgrade, this is again where you're going to be probably putting it in car mode. Uh, now unfortunately you cannot store his um, fishing rod or his buzzsaw in car mode, although you could probably just like wedge it under there and pretend he's carrying it around all the time. This has no place to go, so we'll just leave it off to the side. But uh, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. It's like, hey, he's going fishing. But, uh, anyways, as a masterpiece car, a hot rod can easily fit inside Optimus's trailer. And he can also be carried by Ultra Magnus in car carrier mode. Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, Takara Tomi kind of lied to us a bit. While you can put him, you know, in here, uh, in the main storage area, or of course up on top, you cannot actually have Hot Rod fit through the ramp back here because his exhaust pipes make him too wide. So, you might recall they uh, staged photos where he's looks like he's about to drive up, but uh, they're doing the old, what you did as a kid, you just kind of pick him up and then put him back in the right place. So... That's a bit of a fab. I'm willing to overlook it because, you know, it is a very nice toy. So here is MP28 with its two predecessors, MP9 in Hot Rod Car Mode and the original 80s toy. Uh, Design-wise, the MP28 takes a whole hell of a lot from the original G1 toy in uh, terms of its engineering, even little things like how all the parts are arranged in car mode like where his arms go, where his legs go, which is in sharp contrast to uh, MP9, which pretty much tried to reinvent everything in the way it uh, tried to make the cartoon model for Hot Rod's car mode and robot mode meet in the middle. And uh, in a sense, this is a, a more cartoony style Hot Rod, especially in car mode where it's very curvy and organic like Florida's original art. Whereas this is again, uh, Yuya Unishi redesigning Hot Rod to be more of like a 80s concept car. Um, I do like both approaches. Um, in the end though, this is still a, a much solid toy, so it's certainly much more fun to handle. So transforming uh, MP28 is actually a 
pretty fun process. It's uh, clever and it's got a lot of neat bits that are both uh, callbacks to the G1 toy and his uh, animation model. To start off with, you can pop his legs out. They're just tabbed into the back here. You can see here's the slots that go into the tabs right there. And uh, this also allows us to see his uh, neat dedicated ab crunch joint right there. Uh, and you can push his uh, front skirt plate out of the way if you want. Separate the legs like this and in a move that's uh, very similar to a Combiner Wars toys you open up this panel on the back here and you actually extend his leg using an internal double hinge. So just do that and then you can just push down his foot and take out the heel plate which actually has a little booster thingy on the back there. So continuing on from this uh, carved legs let's uh, focus on his uh, front for a section. Um, what you're going to do is untab his forearms from underneath the cabin area and there's some pretty tight tabs in here. Um, you just kind of have to work them out like that because uh, the tabs do have paint on them as well. Uh, so that's probably why it's a little, a little extra thick. So just get that, bend his elbows about 90 degrees and uh, you want to untab these orange sections here from where they plug into the front of the windshield. So just get your finger in there and do it like that. And uh, what you can also do is uh, separate his shoulders just a bit from the front here. And um, in order to get the engine to pass through without opening up his matrix chamber gimmick here, which isn't really a problem, but in case you just want to do it like the instructions, uh, what you need to do is uh, pinch down his engine section here so that it forces his head to go forward basically making his chin meet the little uh, collar section right here so that allows you to basically take all this and bring it forward like that and there's just a, a little uh, tab right here that's gonna go into the slot like that continuing on with his upper body you can swing out his shoulders on this little double joint here and uh, here's probably the, the big masterpiece moment for uh, the figure to get Hot Rod's arms in a way so that uh, this section is actually facing forward you actually rotate the entire uh, basically front fender portion around the wheel so the wheel is still in the right position but now his arm has that kind of neat thing where it would always like somehow swing around like that and uh, you can also bring his forearms forward. Let's do the same thing on, a, on this side. So yeah, it's a very clever way of doing it. It's uh, different than how MP9 does it where you just sort of like rotate his lower body to get the same effect. So you can do that. You can bring his head section forward and flip this back as much as it'll go. Now when doing that you're going to want to bring this little platform that uh, Hot Rod's head is on up to the back as far as it'll go so you can bring this in as much as it goes the whole engine section right there so it's going to go just like that and uh, pretty much this will all be nicely lined up and you can also tuck in the sides of his uh, car mode front and to finish up with the backpack bring it up like this flip down the little I don't know, these are taillights or whatever they're supposed to be. Um, and you bring in the entire like rear fender of the car with the exhaust on the back. Doing so will help push the little boosters that are part of his backpack up. So you basically get those in. You start to bring this thing up. Bring down this back section on his own little swing arm. This is going to tab in right here. There's a couple of little tabs that go in the slots there. Swing a spoiler around. And to uh, bring all this together, so there's a slot here, goes into this tab. So you're just going to want to make sure that, uh, you know, again, all this is as inward as it'll go. So you bring that in like that. You want to push these down. They're going to kind of click in place and they help to position these in the right spot. And there's actually a pair of tabs that go into slots that are in the windshield, so just kind of put your finger here to get them in there. Nice and tight. 
So one great thing about this figure is nothing really comes apart in, uh, in his robot mode unless you actually want it to. All right, so uh, finishing up, let's get your finger in here, flip out his hands, and here we go. One Turbo Revan Young Punk redo. Oops. He meant to do that. So here we have uh, MP28s in robot mode, and I, I gotta say, um, unlike with Ironhide, it wasn't quite a a huge revelation like oh my god this is the best masterpiece figure ever uh but it is a kind of a quiet sense of uh yeah i'm, I'm pretty satisfied with uh, how he turned out again he's a very solid figure um in both car mode and robot mode like everything that needs to be locked together is locked together uh he has a very clean look even um because he puts so much of the car into his backpack it means he actually does have the clean legs with the uh, the nice techno cavalier boots that he has going on there and uh, there's a nice bit of detail on there and he's of course nice and shiny and uh, looks looks really nice honestly um, another nice thing about him and I shouldn't say using the word nice but uh, oh god is he articulated you know he's got the full-on waist joint his arms I mean they're a little bit wider than uh, you think there's a because there's this visible space between his body and his shoulders but you know that means you actually get some articulation here. I mean, you could use this joint, you can use this joint, you know, it'll go all the way around. His elbow's got a full-on, like, nearly 90-degree bend. Uh, his wrists actually have a little bit of extra motion besides the usual uh, rotation because of the, there's actually some space left there in the um, transformation joint. Uh, his head, he can, you know, look around, do all kinds of things. He can uh, actually look up like this if you want. Um, it's a little silly, though. He's got his full-on extra uh, ab crunch, which is a lot of times used for him sitting down. He's got his, uh, again, waist joint. He has a full set of uh, movable skirt armor here. These back panels move out of the way. These side panels move out of the way. The front moves out of the way, you know, as one thing, but that's kind of the, the style for Masterpiece figures. He's got, you know, full-on universal joints for uh, his hips. There's an upper leg swivel. He has... A double joint in his knee like that so uh, if you want he can totally do a, a rodimus kick um, of course most importantly and uh, no, of course he's got some very deep like moving ankles and he's got you know this big old heel in the back which uh, gives him a nice a range of motion and also his feet do tilt a little bit but uh, most importantly what all this articulation lets you do is and uh, I think a lot of people out there know what's coming is um, you can put him in the traditional, very respectful Seiza pose, as uh, that's the traditional Japanese art of sitting, as seen in the episode The Burden Hardest to Bear. Because remember, they explicitly advertise this figure as being able to do that. Um, it kind of goes to show you how uh, Transformers 2010 was received in Japan, or at least the character of Hot Rod or Hot Rodimus was uh, received in Japan. Probably flew over a lot of our heads in America. But uh, anyways, Hot Rod's dual photon lasers uh, go into his hands in the usual way. Um, you know, there's basically just a pair of tabs here that can slot into his palms and they go into his uh, neat little movable fingers here. And, uh, you know, it is great to have a hot rod figure that can actually hold its weapons, unlike MP9. So, yeah, you can totally have him dual wielding his photon lasers. Although, in the cartoon, he tended to just use this one. And I, I like this design more anyway, so uh, that's fine by me. Um, what else you can do with him is uh, we'll take that one photon laser out. And you probably noticed there was a peg on the other end of Hot Rod's wrist when his fists are retracted and this is where you plug on his buzzsaw just like in the movie this thing is uh, probably the meanest looking version of the buzzsaw I've ever seen and uh, even remember the buzzsaw is actually really supposed to be like these two hook blades that just spin really fast or look like a buzzsaw uh, as such um, it's actually slightly transparent so you can see through it a little bit and it also 
spins around like the big old pizza cutter it is. So uh, yeah, he's got pretty much everything he had in the movie, which uh, of course means, and I showed it off before anyways, um, there's no real anticipation there, but uh, yeah, he comes with a full-on fishing rod. So uh, yeah, and uh, also if you want, you can use his um, extra joint right here. Just kind of undo his shoulders from the uh, the windshield to actually get him to kind of put both of his hands on the fishing rod as if he was actually going to go fishing. So uh, that's just a kind of a fun little thing. It is interesting that the only Transformers to come with fishing rods are both Rodimus toys. <laughs> um, because uh, the other one would be the Kiss Players version of uh, Alternator's Rodimus, or Biotech Rodimus. If there's no Biotech Rodimus, whatever. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's for accessories that uh, he comes with. If you have, of course, if you have um, MP22 Ultra Magnus, you can totally have tiny little Daniel hang out with Hot Rod and he can put his arm around him to, oh, oh, don't want to get him crushed in all of his mecha bits there. But uh, yeah, you can totally try to save him from uh, wandering blitz wings. Come on down, Otto Brat. And what I've seen as kind of controversial from uh, at least the way other fans are looking at this figure is the fact that you can open up his chest. It's just a nice little double joint in here. And he has a place to put MP10's diecast matrix. Um, I'm okay with this. I mean, in a lot of ways, because uh, I, I consider MP9 to just be a hot rod toy. So it, there is a precedent for hot rod carrying the Matrix. I mean, it's fine. A lot of people said, oh, this is what makes his chest so boxy. It's like, no, not really, because if I take this thing back out, and uh, it can get in there pretty good. But if I take this thing back out and I put my finger through, there's plenty of space behind it. So um, that's not what's keeping his chest going into, or at least resting closer to uh, the whole like windshield section here. No, it's like this part of his car mode, like the fr front ends of his uh, fenders there. And the fact that, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff he has to do and like this is too thick for it to go back there. So yeah, don't blame the Matrix gimmick, at least. And you know, I'm fine with his chest looking like that because the toy is, you know, a lot more fun and appealing in hand than it tends to look in pictures, which is, uh, you know, very similar to uh, what happened with this guy. So we have, what was he, like MP12? Yeah. So Masterpiece Sideswipe. Uh, a lot of people are saying, it's like, oh, you know, this is really the best that, you know, Transformers cars have ever been, or Autobot cars have ever been. It's like, eh, I think the Datsun car is a little bit better. But uh, I remember people did not like this toy when they first saw pictures of it. And um, I'm seeing the same thing happen with uh, with Hot Rod here. And it's just kind of weird uh, going back to all the, the complaining that always happens every time we see a new uh, Masterpiece figure show up. But uh, anyway, scale comparisons. So uh, here he is with, uh, again, Masterpiece Sideswipe. Here he is with uh, Unite Warriors uh, Scrapper. So uh, this is how Hot Rod scales with uh, what I consider to be the current crop of Masterpiece style um, Decepticons. Uh, he himself is about like almost like seven and a half inches tall. So um, he's supposed to be taller than uh, your regular Autobot car. So that fits nicely. So lastly, I'm going to pull these away and bring out as before, here's MP9 and the original G1 Hot Rod toy. Honestly, I, I love MP9 for what it was trying to do and the overall layout of its design. It's just this toy has the most asinine engineering in a figure that I've ever seen. And, uh, you know, I don't have to talk about that too much because most people have said enough about it. Um, yeah, it is a little more like cartoon accurate and like the way it looks and all that stuff. Uh, but honestly, this is such a much better fun package as far as a Transformer, and you know, he's a pretty handsome looking robot too. Um, and a lot of that comes from the fact that he is based so heavily on the original G1 uh, Hot Rod figure, you know, and this, according to a lot of people, is like one of the best G1 toys ever made. It's, you know, fun, intuitive, and a lot of that was applied to... Um, 
Masterpiece uh, Hot Rodimus MP28. And uh, that's why I definitely think this is going to be like our definitive uh, Masterpiece Hot Rod. Um, honestly, it's just that this toy is more open about being a toy. Like it has concessions for being a toy. It's like, why does it have a big backpack? Because it wants to be a toy. Why is his chest, you know, a little bit kind of boxy? Because he wants to be a toy. Whereas, uh, by contrast, um, MP9 here, in trying to bring together the disparate character models for uh, both his car mode and robot mode, you know, it's it's less of a toy, more of like a nice thing that you, you know, might pose occasionally and just leave it on the shelf for a while. But again, MP28, um, not like, a, you know, a huge like shock to the system when I got it, just kind of like a pleasant, like, oh, I finally have a really nice hot rod figure that uh, I can pose and play around with. G1 hot rod figure, I should say, you know, not, not counting stuff like the classics or the, the alternators or whatever. No, G1 hot rod. I'm a man of the 86 movie. That's how I've been for pretty much my entire life. But uh, yeah. MP28. I think it's a great figure. And uh, I would highly recommend it to uh, fans of the character or people who just like Transformers. But, uh, anyway, uh, this has been AndrewForCollectionDX.com. Thanks for watching, and remember, you can win if you dare.